Hey, so it's Mrs. Sutton and I'm going to go over the video that you need to do the gummy worm lab. So I'm going to do a bunch of this for you and don't worry, I still have gummy worms to hand out if I see you again for you to eat. And if you're at home, um, I'm going to, this will be a way for you to just eat your gummy worms and then you can have this data. So you're going to open this document in Google Classroom. It's called Gummy Worm Lab. So open this so it's electronic and then I'll tell you when to pause this video and fill things out on your sheet. So our objective is to determine how the density of a gummy worm will change when it's soaked overnight in water. And we're going to practice using, using the metric system. So gummy worms are made of gelatin and sugar. Gelatin is a polymer, like gum, that forms, when large, but still tiny, three-dimensional structures. And it gives structural support to jellies and jams. So that's why gummy worms are stretchy and stretchy, but they still hold together and they're nice and gummy, tasty. Uh, the question is, will the density of a gummy worm change when soaked in water overnight? That's our question we're trying to answer. And so your task first is to pause this video and make a hypothesis or a claim. So your claim in science should be, if something happens, then something will happen. And so we're going to soak a gummy worm in water overnight. So if I soak a gummy worm in water overnight, then what do you think will happen? Pause the video and you're going to write it in there and what your reasoning is. Why do you think that? That's what you're writing in that section. Pause the video now. Now you should have a hypothesis and a reasoning of why you think what will happen will happen. We need a whole bunch of materials and I have them here and we have the lab steps here. I wrote this in case we were doing this in class, so you'll see some notes for remote learners, but I have, will be giving you all of the data. So we're going to re record descriptive observations about the gummy worm first. So I've got two different kinds of gummy worms. We're actually going to do a comparison of the two. I've got both uh, sour gummy worms, whoops, a sour gummy worm here, and I've got a regular gummy worm here. So your first task is to now pause the video and you're going to write a description about these two gummy worms. What do you notice? Color, shape, texture. Sour and plain. If you want to just write about one of them, you can do that. Pause now. Now we're going to find the width and length of our gummy worms, all right? So back to my gummy worm here. I'm going to use my ruler on the centimeter side. So my width of this one here, zero on the centimeter side, two, this one, I'm going to stretch it just so it's fully stretched out, is I would say 9.4. This is 9.4 centimeters. That's the plain gummy worm. Plain is 9.4. Add that into your data on number two. And the width, we'll do the width of our gummy worm uh, sort of in the middle here. So our width, I'm just going to lay it right on top. Our width is 0.9 centimeters. So length is 9.4. Width is 0.9. That's for the plain gummy worm. For the sour gummy worm, our length is about 5.4. Oh, 5.5. Let's do 5.5. And our width of our plain gummy worm, if I lay it right across the top here, is 0.6 centimeters. 0.6 centimeters. That's the sour gummy worm. You should have that data in your worksheet. Now we're going to use a triple beam balance and find the mass of them. Okay, so we'll start with the plain gummy worm. Need to make sure that you can see this whole thing. Let's move the water. There's my scale. There's the balance over here. 
Let's first make sure that it's lined up with the zero. I need to adjust just slightly. Okay. Still just below, but we are really darn close to that zero right over there. Now I'm going to put this on, and it clearly has some weight to it, but not very much. Let's try 10. Ooh, this one is just almost exactly 10 grams. I know you can't see that. It's right on the 10. And that's just lined up. So this plain gummy worm is 10 grams. Let's do the sour gummy worm. That's definitely not 10 grams. So I move that 10 back and I'll move this up the front. Let's try six to begin with. That's too heavy. The sour gummy worm looks like it's about 4.2 grams. 4.2 grams. Okay. The next part is to find a graduated cylinder. I'm on number four. You can always pause if you need to go back or rewind the video. And it says to fill a graduated cylinder with 30 mils of water. So I've done that. Put my worm in the cylinder and subtract 30 from the total. So it's the same thing as we were doing on our um, online lab with the blocks. So here's my 30 mils. I'm going to put the plain one in and we'll see what it displaces. Oops, we want to shove that down so that it's all the way underneath so we get all the volume. I'm going to use my pipette to push it down under the water so that I can see exactly what the total mills are. And I have gone up to 38 mills. So 38 minus, I know it's really hard to see, but I'm at 38 right there mils for the volume of my large uh, plain gummy. We're going to do the same thing with the plain, uh, sorry, with the sour gummy. So I'm going to fill this to 30. I'm going to use a different one though because it's hard to get a gummy out and we're going to use that water. Let me make sure I'm right at 30. Okay, I believe I'm right at 30. Yep, yeah, I am. And now I'll put my sour gummy in there. It's all the way underneath. And I went up to 31, 32, 33 milliliters. 33 milliliters. So let's see if I can make you see that straight. That's a little tricky. But it is 33. So that volume of the sour gummy is 3 milliliters. The volume of the plain gummy was eight milliliters. All right, so now our task is to um, pour those in water and let them sit overnight. And I actually did this with that those exact same measurements yesterday with gummies here. So what we would do in class is pour these into a tray with that 30 mils of water and we'd let that sit overnight. And your hypothesis was what do you think would happen to that thing, okay? And then we're going to do the same thing with the plain gummy. Let it sit in there, a little slimy worm. And we'd let those sit overnight. And guess what? I already did that for you. Zoom ahead in time. Here we are. And here is our sour gummy in 20 mils of water from yesterday. I did 20 mils instead of 30. And here's our plain gummy from yesterday, and I'll open this up, okay? And the directions on my worksheet, were now, which now I've buried underneath, there they are. Notice any changes to the plain ones that we start with, the dry ones. Um, what we didn't do was calculate the density. So what you need to do is calculate the density of those uh, measurements that we had, the mass, divided by the volume, you only need to do that for one of the worms, sour or plain. So the mass that we had to begin with, 9.9, .9, divided by the volume of eight, and figure out that density. Or the mass of the small gummy, which was 4.2, divided by the volume, which was three, 
and you'll get a density there, okay? The next piece of this is day two. So I've already sort of skipped ahead for you. Day two is here. So we're going to try to get that same density again. So we're going to dump these out onto a paper towel and get try to get these into these graduated cylinders to find out their new density. So on the paper towel, this is the trickiest part because they don't like to be moved. There's my plain gummy. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Let's see if I can pour it out here. Here is my, come on. That's my sour gummy, definitely different than it was. Okay. I need to get my ruler out, but now my hands are wet. Here we go. Whee! Okay. So my plain gummy has grown. This is the same colors as yesterday's, and I measured these yesterday as well. So this was, I uh, believe, un uh, just over nine. Now it is 11.6 millimeters. I'm sorry, centimeters. 11.6 is the plain one. If you want the data for the sour gummy, you can only pick one if you want to, that's fine. The sour gummy was just over four. It has grown to 6.7, 6.7. Our width of our plain one, I didn't give that to you. Let me see if I can do the width over the top of it. So the width of this gummy is now 1.9, this way, oops like that, 1.9. I know that's a little hard to see from above, but I'm trying to get all the way to this edge. And the width of the sour gummy is now 1.2 centimeters, 1.2. The next thing I wanna do is find the mass. So I'm gonna uh, tear my, I should have done this on two paper towels, but this is how videos go, is sometimes not totally prepared. The paper towel really doesn't weigh a whole lot. And so I'm going to find the mass with the paper towel. Okay, back up here. So I'll find the mass of the plain gummy first. All right, plain gummy started out at exactly 10. Oh, I'll start at 10 and I'm there. How about 20? 20. 20 is getting there, but that seems a little too far. So I'm going to go back to 10, but it was really close to 20. Ooh, I'm at 29. Oop, one back, I think. One tenth back. This one is 10 plus 9.8. So 19.8 is the mass of the plain gummy after. Day two, and I'll do my sour gummy day two. And it is not quite that much. So sour gummy, remember, was 4.2 grams. Now my sour gummy, ooh, it gained a lot of volume and mass. My sour gummy is now almost exactly 10 grams, right on the 10. So it went from 4.2 to 10 grams. Now I'm going to use that to figure out uh, I need to get my volume next. So same thing that we did with the dry gummies. I'm going to fill this to 30. And I'm gonna fill this one to 30. And I need to get an eye level and check my amounts. Take out a little bit there and take out just a tiny bit here to get down to 30. Now the trickiest part of this whole thing is to try to get really slippery gummies into those jars. So I said here's the sour gummy. Go in! Oh no I lost it! Yahoo! Don't want to lose it! Oh go in there! Oh no! I might have to do this one again. 
you know, science is not always, science is messy, you guys. Oh, let's get all that goo down in there. Oh, nummy. Awesome. Totally fell apart. So I was at 30, and now I'm at, oh man, 35 plus another one, 36 milliliters. So it went up six milliliters. Holy cow. And let's see if I can do this one a little bit better. Oh my gosh, it's totally stuck. Come on. Go, oh, you are gooey and gross and perfect. Oh, success. That was awesome gross science if I ever saw it. Let's get that down there too. Ooh, these are gonna be fun to clean. Don't stick to me, go all the way down. Oh, see that? This was also at 30. And now if I hold this down, get down there. There we go. It is at 44. 44 milliliters is the plain gummy. So sour gummy went up to 36. Plain gummy went to 44. If whatever one you're taking data on is what you are needing. So now we've got the mass and the volume. If you're doing the sour gummy, if you've only taken data on sour gummy, you're good. Take, put your mass from the sour gummy that you typed in here and the volume from the sour gummy here, we're at the volume would be 36. I'm sorry, it would be six. We gotta subtract it from 30. The volume would be six milliliters. The mass would be uh, 10 grams. So 10 divided by six. And if you're doing the plain gummy, the mass was 19.8, I believe. And the volume is now 40. Four, I believe I said, which uh, minus 30 is 14 extra milliliters. So 14 milliliters is the volume of the plane. That's what you're typing in there. Holy cow. When you get those two densities, you are then plugging them into this back spot and you need to answer these questions. When you're answering scientific questions, it's really important that you add data. Data means numbers. So I know I'm holding paper versions of this, but you need to scroll up in your document and find data to support your thinking. <coughs> Excuse me. So explain what happened to the gummy worm when it was soaked overnight. What did you notice? What did you see? <coughs> Use at least two pieces of data. What numbers changed? Use those numbers. It should be two to three sentences, and I even say that you should pretend, sort of, explain to someone who wasn't here. What did you notice? What numbers <coughs> changed? <coughs> I might have to re-video this. <coughs> Tickle. <coughs> did your hypothesis work? This would happen in class too. <coughs> and now what questions do you have? Answer them down here. I might re-video this, but if I don't, enjoy my coughing fit at the end. Life goes on. Hope you have a great Wednesday and a good weekend. Take this data, turn it in. Bye.